Join us in building a more fair and transparent future. Visit ParticiaBlockchain.com today. Welcome to Decrypt, the series that decodes and demystifies everything blockchain, crypto finance, and cybersecurity. Today, I am very happy to welcome our guest, serial entrepreneur and the founder of Partizia Blockchain, based in Crypto Valley, Switzerland, Mr. Brian Gallagher. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. You are an owner and investor in multiple blockchain projects. Can you tell us the difference between a blockchain project and a traditional web business? Absolutely. A blockchain project is all about the decentralization of stakeholders and democratizing access to participate in a network. So in a traditional web business, you have owners, shareholders, founders, and it's a closed group. So in a startup, you have to get investors who are buying into your business. Maybe there's a handful or 10 of them. It's a very small network. In blockchain networks, you actually have a, a, an open system where anyone can participate and come and buy tokens in the blockchain that power the protocols. And then by default, what you have is a community of stakeholders that continues to grow with word of mouth. So it's a community-driven initiative that anyone can participate in. It's not limited to venture capitalists or accredited investors who can buy shares from a stock exchange. So really, it's about opening the economy so that anyone can participate and see the benefits. So, Brian, you have been working since 2019 on your latest blockchain project, which is building a layer one blockchain. So can you tell us what this entails, the resources needed, the people involved, the economy behind it? Yeah, so a layer one blockchain means the infrastructure that's powering the network, the protocols that are governing the system. So you can think of this as the decentralized Amazon Web Service. So application developers would typically go to Amazon Web Services and pay them for resources to build applications. With a blockchain, developers can come and purchase tokens from the open market, and then they can deploy their applications on top of a layer one blockchain. Then there are some solutions called layer two, which are basically piggybacking off of a layer one like Ethereum, but they're more centralized and they allow you to transfer your assets this layer two, where transactions are more efficient. So that's the difference between layer one and layer two. Can you tell us more about the challenges facing uh, a new blockchain? First of all, because it's a decentralized network, that means you need to sufficiently recruit enough parties who are going to power this network. You can't just start it with one person because then it's not a truly decentralized blockchain. So first you need to recruit the node operators who power the network. You need to build this amazing technology, which is very difficult to do. In our case, Partija Blockchain is a group of cryptographers who have been building this technology since 2008. So there's about 40 people who just work on the engineering and protocol side. And then once you do go to market, you need to have a community that's growing itself and increasing the amount of stakeholders. So then you need to you know, sufficiently uh, recruit community and then have applications being built on top of your blockchain by developers, which in turn bring more users to the network. And that's how it grows. Can you tell us a bit more about the blockchain trilemma? Currently, blockchains are uh, plagued by scalability issues or cost issues, meaning it's very secure, like Bitcoin or Ethereum, but we can't have one billion users using it because as more people come, it's not scaling to where costs stay low. So if you want to make a transaction on Ethereum, it can cost $100 just to make one transaction. So that's a scalability issue you need to solve. Then there's the cost issue. Uh, but then the big one is also security. If you solve for scale or cost, a lot of times you, the trade-off is there's less security. How do I have an extremely secure blockchain that also scales and can work with all the other networks in a cost-efficient way? Brian, in 2021, there were about five, between five and tw 10 major blockchains. In 2022, we see the launch of quite a few new ones such as yours. So can you explain to us how a business or an, an investor can determine which blockchain is right for him or them? It really depends on the use case that you're going for. If you want to simply store your wealth in a uh, unconfiscatable currency such as Bitcoin that's uh, outside of a custodial banking system, you're going to want to put your money into Bitcoin because it's the most secure network by far. 
It's the most secure network in the history of the internet. It's never gone down in its entire existence. There's never been a hack that's penetrated the underlying protocols. But if you're an application developer who wants to build a social network on top of a blockchain that's censorship resistant where, you know, for example, Twitter bans a lot of accounts. If a Twitter equivalent was built on a blockchain, those accounts would be permanent. Any tweets would be permanently on the blockchain. They can't be removed. So you'd want to build on an application layer of Partija blockchain, for example, which you know, can handle high frequency transactions at a very low cost. Because uh, if you try to build a social network on Ethereum, for example, anytime you made a post, like if you made a tweet, it might cost you $50 to $100 just to place that tweet on the blockchain. So it's really about the use case you're going for. And that's why you see more and more blockchains coming to market is because a lot of times they have a specific focus or use case. Brian, we have heard a lot about the promises that blockchain and Web3 will uh, help us solve a lot of society's problems. What is your take on this? It's about creating open access to financial network, uh, markets and networks. So when you think of you know, the United States, we have great uh, banking systems. You don't necessarily need cryptocurrency. We have access to the broader financial markets. But if you're from the Philippines, Brazil, or India, you really don't have access to these markets, and your currencies may not be very stable. For example, the Turkish lira has continued to collapse over the past couple of years. So people are looking for alternatives where they can store value and have more security. So Brian, can you give us your final word about why the blockchain industry is exploding and why you believe people should get involved in this business? All you have to do is look at what's happening every day uh, for example, the Canadian government just uh, invoked emergency powers over a peaceful protest uh, where they declared they can seize the bank accounts and freeze funds of anyone involved in the protest or anyone who helped anyone who was involved in the protest. So even the local shop who sold a cup of coffee to one of those truckers, we've heard that they've had their bank account frozen. And so it's really about bringing a check and balance on the current centralized power. That's why it is exploding now, is because people are waking up to the reality that we do need more decentralized solutions that put the control and power back into the hands of the users. So it's you know, bringing mass adoption as we continue to see these types of behaviors from big banks and governments, people are going to continue to search for alternatives. Thank you very much, Brian Gallagher, for explaining to us the blockchain business. And join us next week when we'll be hosting the president of the Cyber Peace Institute, who will be explaining cybersecurity risk now with the escalating Russia-Ukraine crisis. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Partizia Blockchain, infrastructure for the greater good.